<laughs> Means people can't watch online. Nope. And I don't know what's wrong with you. So my brain hurts. We're not going to worry about it. We're in Esther chapter seven, and um, I don't know what I was going to say. So let's pray, and maybe God will tell me what to say then. Lord God, Heavenly Father, um, send your blessing upon us this morning as we open up your word. May our hearts be enlivened by uh, you speaking to us. Um, may our hearts be lifted up as we hear about your providence for your people uh, in the book of Esther. And may our faith be strengthened in you, in Jesus' name, amen. Um, so at the top of your sheets, the Bible, People's Bible Commentary sums up this chapter, so chapter 7 in this way. The persecutor was cast down as quickly as he had risen, but God's people were still not yet free from danger. So that's where we're going to get as we go through this. Let's go ahead and read Esther chapter 7. And I'm going to start in chapter 6, verse 14. So as somebody brought up last week, I skipped that verse when I was reading because it's kind of set with the next section. But uh, While they were uh, talking with him, the king's eunuchs arrived and hurried to bring Haman to the feast that Esther had prepared. So the king and Haman went into the feast with Queen Esther. And on the second day, as they were drinking wine after the feast, the king again said to Esther, What is your wish, Queen Esther? It shall be granted you, and what is your request? Even to half of my kingdom it shall be fulfilled. Then Queen Esther answered, If I have found favor in your sight, O king, and if it please the king, let my life be granted me for my wish and my people for my request. For we have been sold, I and my people, to be destroyed, to be killed, and to be annihilated. If we have been sold merely as slaves, men and women, I would have been silent, for our affliction is not to be compared with the loss to the king. Then King Ahasuerus said to Queen Esther, Who is he, and where is he, who has dared to do this? And Esther said, A foe and enemy, this wicked Haman. Then Haman was terrified before the king and the queen. And the king arose in his wrath from the wine drinking, and went into the palace garden. But Haman stayed to beg for his life from Queen Esther, for he saw that harm was determined against him by the king. And the king returned from the palace garden to the place where they were drinking wine, as Haman was falling on the couch where Esther was. And the king said, Will he even assault the queen in my presence in my own house? As the word left his mouth, left the mouth of the king, they covered Haman's face. And then Harbona, one of the eunuchs in attendance, uh, in attendance on the king said, Moreover, the gallows that Haman has prepared for Mordecai, whose word saved the king, is standing at Haman's house, fifty cubits high. And the king said, Hang him on that. So they hanged Haman on the gallows that he had prepared for Mordecai. Then the wrath of the king abated. <coughs> so let it be written. So let it be done. Questions, comments, thoughts? Straight to the point. Straight to the point. Um, which for the most part the book of Esther is. But in this case, right, just kind of, you know, it's time for Haman to get his, right? My, how the mighty have fallen. Right? Questions? Anybody? All right. So the, on your sheets, the second banquet finally be, brings the request. What do you notice about Esther's request? Anything kind of stick out to you about her request? Yeah? It's kind of like she leaves the king in a position where his pride is not destroyed. You know, like, mm -hmm. if we've all been sold into slavery, I've been bothered. Mm -hmm. You know, so yep. his ego remains intact. So there's certainly an amount of, um, and I don't mean this in a, in a negative way, but posturing. Uh, in the request, right? Very good. 
What else? What doesn't she say? She didn't say to kill Hammond. She didn't say to kill Hammond. No. She's going to let let that play out. She didn't say she was a Jew. She didn't say she was a Jew. Notice she just says, save me and my people. She doesn't specifically point out to the decree that it has been made in the name of the king to kill all the Jews. Okay, so this is the third time in reference to this whole decree. The first one, Haman says, there's a people that are a thorn in your side, you should get rid of them. And the king says, good idea. Jews are never named. Right? And then we know that Haman puts together the decree. And then when um, 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 Haman is uh, bringing up the whole issue of Mordecai and how to um, celebrate him, he doesn't bring up Mordecai's name. So the Jews don't come into it there. And then now Queen Esther doesn't bring up the Jews here either. Because many people ask, how could the king be so ignorant? Right? I mean, he, this decree's been out there for a while. Doesn't he know that it's going, that the problem of it? And it seems as though Haman, or the king doesn't really understand somehow the extent of the decree that Haman put out or the fact that um, Esther is a Jew. Remember, Esther is not her Jewish name. Right? Um, so it, it, it's hard to tell, but Esther doesn't just walk straight into the Haman has a decree to kill all the Jews, and would you please do something about it? Okay. So she appeals to him also from the standpoint of, listen, somebody has uh, ordered my death and the death of my people. Because all that wine he was drinking too. Well, could be. Could be. Could be. Um, yeah. Okay. So she does not um, jump right into it. Okay. Uh, others will say that uh, the king um, is, uh, does recognize what's going on and is pleading ignorance for Haman's sake at that point. Who knows exactly? But what we do know is that the queen does not um, make reference to her heritage as a Jew still. Remember Mordecai told her, don't do that. Still, and leaves it um, uh, to the king to determine how we're going to move forward. Okay. And what's the king's response? Those outside. Who's, well, first he says, so who's this guy that's... Got it. Now, whether he knows it or not, some would suggest he probably knows exactly who she's talking about, but wants her to say it, right, so that she can indict him. Or he doesn't, he's not connecting all the dots. Um, or even possibly that he really doesn't know about the decree. Because remember, he handed his ring over to Haman. So Haman does not need the king to know what he's doing. All he knows for sure, or could maybe know for sure, is that Haman said, there's a people that you need to get rid of. And he said, combine, go do what you want. Here's my ring. Make it happen. So he truly might not know that the Jews are um, slated to be destroyed. Um, uh, you got he, got, he got paid for it, right? Yeah. And we still have to deal with the issue, and that's why I put this, um, this kind of summary at the, bot at the top, right? Um, we're going to deal with Haman, but we still haven't dealt with the fact that the Jews are going to get destroyed. That's still in place. Okay? Now, you, you, you can imagine the scene, or at least I try to imagine the scene, right, where all of a sudden uh, Esther's bringing up this request in front of Haman. Remember, the two people there are the, or three people there are Queen Esther, uh, Xerxes, and Haman. And so finally, 
the queen um, says, okay, it's time for me to ask. And can you imagine what Hom going through Haman's mind when the king says, who is this? And the queen says his name. Right? One of those stomach falls out the bottom of your body and you know your head starts spinning and um, this is not a good thing. Okay? This is not a good thing. Amon's not had a good couple days to begin with. Okay? And uh, now it only seems to be getting worse. So I just said, what do you imagine was going through Haman's mind at that moment? A lot of <laughs> Well said. <laughs> Mary, who? She called me vile. Huh? Yeah, wicked, vile. Yeah. It's pretty bad. Yeah. She could have called him worse. <laughs> but we don't use those words in the Bible. So. I have an assumption here. You have an assumption here. I just wonder if Haman pissed off the eunuchs so much that the eunuch said, hey, there's a gal out there. Well, <laughs> yeah, we'll get to that. <laughs> We'll, we'll get to that, yeah, yeah, we'll get to that, okay, yeah. What else do you think is going through Haman's mind? He's, ca he's a calculating person, so he's now trying to figure out the next move, probably. Yeah, he's trying to figure out if he has one, um, although, if he has a next move, right? Although the, the narrative seems to suggest that he knows this is not going to go well, right? I've, uh... I have, uh, um, because who does he turn to? I don't even remember what I asked. Um, <clears throat> who does he turn to for help? Queen. Yeah. Um, you know, as far as Xerxes is concerned, he knows he's pretty much in, in a bad place. And so if anybody's going to save Haman, it's going to be Queen Esther. Right? Lots of luck um, with that. What else? The uh, word sold. She notes that we were only sold. If we were slaves. only sold as slaves. We were sold to die. And who paid, who paid the king off? With this? Yeah, yeah. So she recognizes that there was a, a, a financial exchange uh, for the life of the Jews. Right? Yep, yep. Now I gotta. I have to imagine at this point that Haman knows he's done, but I also have to wonder whether he's in this weird place of, um, if you will, fearing his own life, but also a place of satisfaction, knowing that the Jews are still going to be killed. Right. That's what he set out to do. Um, and that's not hasn't changed with any of this. Remember, what can't the king do? He cannot undo that decree that his ring sealed. It has to still happen. Just out of curiosity, I wonder if if Mordecai had started bow, bowing to him, would this have been? Or was it because of Mordecai? Yeah, I mean, that's one of those great questions, right? If Mordecai had been bowing to Haman all along, would any of this have happened? And that's kind of one of those, if Adam and Eve didn't sin, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah um, it did happen. So it's, yeah, who knows if, if Ham, you know, that's how, what set it all up, right? Haman got upset because Mordecai wouldn't honor him like he would honor the king, which is exactly what Haman re what the king had decreed everybody needed to do, and Haman was going to... Remember, Haman couldn't even rejoice in everything he had because Mordecai was this thorn in his side. Right? So, good. Anything else? Yeah? I have to assume that Haman didn't think that it was a real tight relationship between the king and the queen here either to put forth something like that because when she says, I want my life spared and then the life of my people, you know, he, the king knocks into action then. Right. You see, and I thought, he didn't know the people, he could have cared about the people, but he was 
Well, yeah, and, and that's a good point. I mean, he may not have he may not have thought that that would that that relationship was important enough to the king anyway. But the reality is, um, it didn't matter at this point as far as him accomplishing the death of Mordecai and the Jews, because as soon as the king gave him the ring, that was done. Okay, regardless of what anybody would find out later or anybody would do or anything like that, that decree was made and it was done. The king could find out later that the queen was a that it was against the Jews and the queen's a Jew, a Jew, and the king could do nothing but mourn the loss of his queen at that point. Because quite frankly, if the king backs off after the decree is made in his name to save his queen, what has the king done? And that kind of gets into the next question, but what has the king done if he backs off? He's completely undone his authority. Now nobody has to listen to a thing he says from this point on because he can change his mind. Right? It's almost like God saying the wages of sin is death. Nah. <laughs> Let's change it. You know, it doesn't... All authority that is lost. Okay? Good, so that kind of gets us into the next question. Xerxes goes to the garden to clear his head, maybe literally of the wine, although... The drinking of wine back then was largely done with, a, with significant amounts of water, so there's not an indication here necessarily that he was drunk, but happy. Okay. Um, goes to the garden to clear his head and figure out what to do next. There's a lot for him to unravel. What challenges is he confronted with? How he's going to undo the uh, the whole situation with Esther. Possibly um, that's hit, that struck his mind if he hasn't um, really connected all the dots and now all of a sudden he understands that this decree um, will mean Esther's life, that that's possibly part of it, what he's, what he's unraveling. What else? He gave Haman all this power. How does he get back? Yeah, he gave him, Haman all this power um, and if um, if he takes the life of his official, he's going to be hard pressed to find other people that are trusting of him. Yes. Right? That's exactly what I was going to say. That's his top guy. Yeah, yeah. So you're taking the life of your top guy. What else? Yeah, you, you've, you, that whole situation with Haman kind of creates this idea that you can see uh, Xerxes' whole um, reign um, unraveling a bit, right? Um, when you are the king and your own court starts unraveling right beneath you, what you're generally watching is your reign unraveling, okay? Amun's got lots of people that are connected to him too, Right? Um, taking Haman's life could mean that his is in jeopardy. Because people are um, uh, against, uh, because people rise up against the king for taking Haman's life. Um, so there's a, there's a whole, all kinds of, what am I going to do here? Um, and some would suggest that he goes back into the room um, still not completely sure what he's going to do, but that um, taking Haman's life is not his first idea. Okay? What changes his mind? The eunuch. No, the eunuch doesn't change. Doesn't change. We're not to the eunuch yet. So Haman, Haman decides that his only out is to beg for Queen Esther's mercy. And as he gets on his knees to beg, you can almost imagine him kind of flopping, says on the couch, but flopping on her lap, right? Kind of flopping down before her. As he stops flopping down on the couch, flopping down before her, however that is, the king walks back in. 
And what does he assume? That the that Haman's now assaulting the queen. Okay. In fact, um, you almost get the sense that um, the king um, um, believes at that moment that Haman's request to kill all the Jews is meant to destroy the queen first and prop, first and foremost. And now that the king knows what's going on, Haman's going to make sure that that part happens before the king can do anything about it. Okay. So as soon as the king walks back in and sees Haman assaulting the queen, right? He says a few words, right? Basically saying, I can't believe you're doing that. In my house, right? In my place, uh, verse uh, 8. Will he even assault the queen in my presence in my own house? And as the word left the mouth of the king, they covered Haman's face. Okay, what does that mean? We'll say that again? That's a bad sign. That's a bad sign. <laughs> That's a bad sign. Have you ever, uh, I'm, I'm thinking of old westerns, right? And they're getting ready to hang somebody on the gallows, and what do, what do they do? Put a bag over his head, right? <laughs> that's basically the sense that's happening. Okay, now, he hasn't decided to hang Haman, but the putting the bag over his head is the death sentence. Okay, you're done. Now, some will suggest that um, that simply those attending to the king knew, based on those words, you assaulted the queen, that there was um, um, laws in place, which would make sense, that anybody who assaults the queen or the king gets the death penalty. And remember, if there's a law in place, it cannot be undone. And so all he had to do was say, and you're assaulting the queen, and that was the indictment, and they're getting ready to give him the death penalty. Others will suggest that he uh, has already decided to hang um, Haman, and he had told his attendants, uh, be ready to take him away because I'm going to have him hang, except for there's no indication at this point that Xerxes knows about the gallows that Haman had built. Then there's no reason he would have yet, because remember, Haman never got the opportunity to ask the king for permission to hang Mordecai. He was going in to do it, remember? And um, and uh, the king had had um, the reading read to him and then asked about Mordecai and asked Haman what to do for the man he wanted and all that stuff. So he never had a chance to ask the king. And after the king um, did all that for Mordecai, right? Put him in the royal robes, put a crown on his head, put him on the king's horse. Um, my guess is Haman had no, no desire whatsoever to ask to hang Mordecai. But the gallows have been built. Okay. Questions, thoughts? What happened to the ring? What happened to what? The ring. The ring? Well, I'm sure they took it off his <laughs> hand. Yeah. Possibly severed the finger to get the ring off, but... Yeah. All right, question four. This chapter is dripping with irony again. <clears throat> Who says God doesn't have a sense of humor? <clears throat> Perhaps most ironic is how Haman dies, right? How does Haman die? <laughs> On the gallows that he built to have Mordecai on, right? Ironic or preordained? I mean, kind of in this whole book, we keep going down the path of, we haven't talked about it a lot, but right, is this just fate playing out? Or where is God in all of this? Remember, God's not mentioned, but what's the underlying assumption um, in this whole process? God is at work in some way, right? So let's look at Proverbs 26, verse 27. Esther, Psalm, Proverbs 
Esther, Job, Psalm, Proverbs 26. Verse 27. Proverbs 26, verse 27 says, Whoever digs a pit will fall into it, and a stone will come back on him who starts it rolling. Right? Now, whose words are these? Whose words are these? God's. Right? These are God's words. Okay? So, simply ironic that Haman is hanged with his own gall gallows, or is it quote unquote preordained? Let's look at Galatians 6, verse 7. Galatians is after Acts, right? <laughs> Galatians chapter 6, verse 7. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever one sows, that he also reap. Alright, so is this just faith? Or is God doing his thing? How many say this is just faith? How many say God's doing his thing? How many aren't sure? <laughs> <laughs> but it is ironic that he built the big giant. It is ironic that he Oh no, it's still ironic, it is. I mean, that's why I said who who says that God doesn't have a sense of humor, right? Um, here you want to hang Mordecai. Um, and and if and if um, Haman had Mordecai hanged, does that doom the Jews? If Haman had hanged Mordecai, does that doom the Jews? <clears throat> no. I mean, God can still do, do something, right? Mordecai himself is not, is not quote unquote, the key to fixing this, right? Um, you know, quite frankly, um, we can rewrite Esther in any number of ways. Right? Because we've talked about this before, um, when the future of, the, um, of God's people were, um, was threatened in Egypt, what did God do? Hit a boy in a basket in the lake, and, or in the river, and took care of it. And a lot of young children died. Right? So there's lots of ways God can fix this and still get to where we have to get, which is Jesus, right? There's lots of way God, ways God can, God can fix this. But what else is happening here? What did the family of Haman say to Haman when he told them what happened? Remember, they did not say... Just chill. Mordecai will get his when the Jews all die. What did they say? If he's a Jew, then you're toast. <laughs> right? Does that mean, uh, oh, by the way, Haman, we believe in that God too. No, what are they saying? They worship a really strong God. There's all kinds of stories out there. Right? Very, very recent ones about this guy getting thrown into a lion's den and not getting eaten. And these three guys getting put into a fiery furnace and not burning up. And stuff like that. So this is a really, really powerful God. And so if God's on their side, sorry, Haman. Okay? So now what does God seem to be doing? And, and I know we're putting a lot of seems to be opinion kind of stuff, but what does God seem to be doing? Haman was going to have Mordecai hung 75 feet in the air. Why? For everybody to see. So that everybody could see. 
And everybody who saw Mordecai hanging way up there in the air would know what? Haman is one of the most powerful men in this kingdom. Right? Now Haman's going to hang there. And what's God saying? He's going to make Haman an example so that the people fear the God of the Jews. Okay? Yeah? I wonder if the king would have had Haman come uh, even without uh, Haman assaulting the queen. But it could be, we don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, who knows what, and, and, and exactly, he's, he says, you know, I wonder another one of these, right, if he hadn't assaulted the queen, would Haman still have been hanged? We don't know, right? Uh, certainly, uh, Haman at least believed that unless the queen asked for his life to be spared, he was going down, right, in one way or another, okay? But, um, you know, we know Xerxes is a man who jumps to judgments, um, reacts to his feelings, not thinking through things very much. And so when he sees Haman assaulting the queen, there's no, there's no more thinking about this. Uh, no more trying to clear his head. No more worries about how's it going to look in the kingdom that his second in command dies. No more worries about uh, what does that mean for the people, rest of the people under me and whether they're going to trust me anymore. All of those issues that the king is probably facing, uh, even quote unquote, is my kingdom come unraveling before my eyes? None of that matters anymore because Amen has assaulted the queen. That also gave him the perfect out. It's like if he was looking for a reason, if he was oh, yeah. looking for a way, it's like, you yeah. just gave you the exact it, cer it certainly does give King Xerxes an out because he can now let everybody know that Haman is hanging from those gallows because he assaulted the queen. And you know that's not going to be alleged or anything like that. I saw him trying to kill the queen. Right? That's how it's going to be. Um, um, said so that people know. Okay. Good. And if you look at those passages right from Proverbs and Galatians, um, um, you know, God makes it clear um, that people who go down this path are going to fall by it, right? Uh, people who wield the sword will die by the sword kind of, kind of thing. So it shouldn't surprise us uh, although, again, I do like his sense of humor in having Haman hanged on the same gallows. I think that was pretty clever. Uh, but um, God, is, God is enacting his promised um, a demise of those who head down this path. Okay. So if anybody decides to, you know, assault the queen, just know <laughs> this is what's going to happen. Now, what do passages like this reveal about us and our predicament? If you're going to go down that path, okay. God is for us. God is for us. Okay, that's that's a good one. I wasn't going that way. <laughs> But that's a good way to end. God's always in control. God's always in control. Yeah. I didn't my uh, Bible said that we did not earn, uh, none of us have earned our king's favor. What is Haman guilty of? Being God. Ultimately. Pride, ego. Pride, ego. He's ultimately guilty of turning on the king and raising himself above the king. Um, 
if you would like a really, really good definition of sin, replace king with God. Sin is turning on God and raising ourselves above God. So when I said, what do pastors like these reveal about us and our predicament? Literally, there but by the grace of God go I. Um, where Jesus hung on the cross, where did they place those crosses? They were generally placed on the road, on one of the main roads going in and out of the city so that everybody could see. Right? Amen is hanged on the gallows where everybody can see. And that cross was mine. Where I could die and everybody could see that I am the one that turned on the king and raised myself above him. But instead, there but by the grace of God go I, instead, who was hung in plain sight for everybody to see instead of me. Jesus. Jesus. Now this also, um, um, as I was thinking through it, and, I'm, and as we get farther and farther along in, um, and I'm not really reading much of this, so maybe I'm making it up, but as we get farther and farther in Esther, I'm seeing more and more of these connections to Christ. Uh, like that one. Um, um, and now I forgot what I was going to say. I'll come up with it. Questions? Comments? Complaints? Oh, now I remember, right? So the reality of sin, either Christ hangs for me, or I have to hang for myself. Either by grace through faith, he is my replacement, or by unbelief, I reject him as my replacement, and I am left to pay my own penalty. Okay? Haman is left to pay his own penalty. Okay? Questions? Thoughts? Comments? Complaints? Criticisms? Any other C words? Were all the kings sort of like he was, you know, from the very beginning? You know, him and told him, you know, what he Yeah, was. yeah. Yeah, okay, go ahead. Are all the kings um, nut jobs? Is that what you're asking? <laughs> <laughs> Knee jerk, um, reactionary. You know, I don't know that you can say all kings, but you got to remember most of these guys, right? Were raised in the palace. They have everything they want. Uh, there, there is complete power, uh, even to the point of being considered deities. And so, people mean nothing to them. Um, it just seems like he could have asked him more questions about Oh yeah, he, he could have, yeah, but two, if you're, if he could have asked um, um, Haman more questions before he just handed over his ring and said, do what you, do what you need to do. Yeah, he could have, but also, if you're king uh, over the largest empire in the world, 127 provinces, and your right-hand man says, we need to do this, you're not going to spend a lot of time micromanaging. Because you're, making decrees right and left and dealing with this and that, and you're king. You're supposed to just spend time drinking wine. And remember, you got a whole palace full of concubines and stuff you got to deal with. So, you know, um, you know, you got more important things to do. You have people to do your thing, right? So he trusts Haman, which really isn't a surprising thing. And, and a lot of the kings that we see in the Bible, whether they're kings of God's people or others, are they're pretty much knee-jerk reaction. I'm going to do what I want. Not really worried about the consequences because when you are king, 
How many consequences are there? Nobody questions you. Very few. Nobody questions you. Because if you do, right? Off with their heads. What's that? That's uh, well, that's um, the Queen of Hearts, right? Yeah. Yeah. Good. So, I mean, I don't, you know, I don't know. Um, we can sit here and we can do a lot of, again, a lot of what if King had asked questions? What if Haman had done this? What if Mordecai hadn't done that? What if Esther um, hadn't, my words, not the Bible's words, but basically prostituted herself out to become queen in the first place? All those kinds of things. What if, what if, what if, what if, what if? But that's not what happened. Okay? Um, that's not what happened. Yeah? Well, you know, it seems like that back then, uh, kings didn't have to have a lot of qualifications. <laughs> you had to have one qualification. Dad. Dad was king and nobody's killed you yet. Well, just because your dad was king doesn't make you smart. Right? Um, so, but I, I think, too, that gets back to that other question. I mean, if you're king, you're going to surround yourself with people that you um, trust because you can trust very few people. Right? Um, second in command, if somebody's going to walk in, stab you in the gut, and take the throne, who's the most likely person? The one who's second in command and has you and can 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 tell the guards, I need a moment alone with the king. Or your oldest son. Yeah, or your oldest son who says to the guards, Give me a minute with my dad, or you know, whatever, right? So you're gonna surround yourself with people you trust, and if you trust them not to kill you, you're probably gonna trust them to do their job, whatever it is. Rich. We're talking about things of the past, but if you look at today, you have dictators, you have things, and you make people's lives miserable. What's the old phrase, right? Absolute power corrupts absolutely. Right? Ah, he's describing Putin. He's describing Putin. We can go through history and we can find a lot of men and women in history who fit this, right? Um, not to uh, pick on the rest of the world, I think we can find plenty of people in the United States that fit this. All right? um, that, like I said, absolute power corrupts absolutely is, that, is absolutely true. People in power, uh, you know, it goes to your head. Okay? And it's rare that it doesn't in some way. Um, and now if you were born to be king and your dad dies and you are now king and everybody's bowing to you when you walk by and you have courts full of people that are just catering to every need and all you do is have to say something and it come out of your mouth and it's taken care of and done, how long is it going to be before you're pretty full of yourself? Right? And then on top of that, you don't necessarily believe in any God that's better than you to begin with. So pretty much, you know, Xerxes or anybody else in his position is going to consider him the most important, you know, the most interesting man on the face of the earth. Thank you for smiling, Jamie. <laughs> all right. Anything else? Anything else at all? We've still got a few minutes or I'll let you go early. I, can, I have time for taking a nap before late. <laughs> huh? I need an app. It's been a week. All right, then. Let's close with the Lord's Prayer. I'll give you a few minutes of your life back. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. So next week, the irony continues, but also we get to figure out, or they get to figure out how to save the Jews.
Blessings, everybody. Uh, all the tables get go up. Oh, nice.